Welcome to the Occupational Safety Leadership Podcast, episode number 76. In today's episode, we continue our journey in ISO 45001, and in today's episode, we break down um, leadership and worker participation. So this is one of, uh, I think, the key parts. I know I talked about scope in the last one as a key part, but leadership, if the leaders are not into it, it's just not going to happen. The same thing with the workers. It could be something that looks awesome on paper and has no real um, um, real world um, application. We didn't do anything but waste everybody's time, effort, and money, and it's really about protecting the people. So let's just dive right into it then. So for those who did not uh, see the, uh, the previous ones, a very brief introduction, ISO 45001 is a standard for occupational health and safety management systems. It provides the framework for organizations to identify, control, and minimize risks related to health and safety in the workplace. And like all things I do in in my life, the ISO standards follow the plan, do, check, act model. Plan something, you do it, you check on the progress, and then you act on the results. Let's just get right into it. So, um... Leadership and worker participation. Let's kind of talk about a couple of uh, um, examples then for leadership then. So top management is expected to demonstrate a clear commitment to safety and health. And of course, that means giving people the time, effort, money to fix things. When you um, give people the time for training, that is management commitment when you give them the money to fix things management commitment so so there's a lot of things that the management controls and they are are um really really one of the key factors in this whole thing because if their attitude is everybody's going to work safe but nobody gets time effort or money to ever do anything it uh anything about it you could make some progress uh, but most likely you're going to be stuck in exactly the same rut with people just uh, knowing that management does not care about them. Let's break down a couple more examples then. So establishing a occupational health and safety policy. So I know that it sounds funny, of course, but anytime you write something on paper, the company president, the uh, plant president, I mean the, the plant, plant, plant manager, plant supervisor, whoever that is, signs it. You're now saying this is exactly what we're signing up for then. So we're not just lip service. We're not just talking. It takes a whole new uh, level of of, uh, seriousness when you sit down, stick it on paper. It also means that you can help hold them accountable too because you guys signed it. You knew what you were signing up for for this thing. So um, And uh, it really will help you in the grand scheme, scheme of things get this commitment from the workers too because workers have probably heard over the years like oh great here comes another program here comes something else um maybe they'll be into it for a month or two and they'll lose focus and interest and go do something else so they have to see that management is just as serious about it as uh their workers are then let's look at a couple more uh examples then so uh setting measurable objectives and goals that comply with the policy then. So uh, you sit down, you set a bunch of goals, objectives, and all that, and then you set up a system where you're, you're going to measure your progress. And like all things, you have to actually tell people about the progress. You just can't say, oh, we, we got goals, we're doing good, everything's because people just assume that things are not going well when they when they don't hear about this progress. They just assume people are not serious, they came up with this whole system and thus I've never heard in anything else about it. So we, we always want to go back and make sure that we communicate the progress, goals, objectives, all that good stuff then. Let's switch gears over a little bit uh, over to the worker side then. So uh, the workers are, are the ones who face these hazards all day, every day. So it doesn't mean that their job is super dangerous or anything, but they are the experts. They they know what to do out there. So I can write a fantastic SOP from my cube, and it doesn't mean anything because I've got to get, get buy-in from the workers to help me go back, and with their help, of course, because it really has to be their, their idea, their focus, their vision. How do we go back and make things better safer out there so 
Um, a, a, a lot of us as uh, professionals are coming into a organization where um, patterns, expectations, uh, strategies are already set. So it's not a overnight shift that you just say, I've decided that we're going to do this. And in two or three weeks, we'll be re uh, re re uh, ready to go for this thing. You have to help people get ready for this. You have to show that you're serious. You communicate intention. You communicate um, management's commitment. And because many times workers have brought these things forward and they've been beaten down or told no or told it's going to cost money. We don't have that in the budget. We don't. And so some people just stop giving suggestions because they've never been acted on. So you may be walking into a situation that for years people have really tried to, to communicate these hazards. Nobody's ever listened until this system. So they will probably be a little hesitant at first. Like, are they really serious? Are they just saying this? Uh, some people really have to see, uh, see, see some things happen. They, they have to have time on their side to say, I said something, it was acted on, or if it wasn't acted on, somebody actually came back and communicated to me why. Let's look at a couple of more examples then. So, workers should always be involved in hazard identification, risk assessments, incident investigations, because they can, can sit down, of course, and say, this is exactly why this person did this, you know. You would hope that somebody wouldn't do something unsafe, but maybe if they weren't taught it was unsafe, maybe they're facing a lot of pressure and they're starting to skip steps, they're starting, starting to not follow things because um, history has shown them when they did not follow it in the past, they never got hurt. Well, this time they, they did get hurt then, you know. So we have to do everything we can to give them the opportunities to participate in the uh, in the um, uh, development of ISO 45001. When they, when they own it, then they feel a sense of, I'm going to make this thing work and not just something that's crammed, crammed down my throat. They have to really be part of this. And that is it for episode 76. Very brief uh, intro into the leadership and worker participation. We covered a couple of examples out there. I can't stress enough that if you're a safety professional and think I'm just going to walk in and I'm going to just put stuff on paper and it's my my way or the highway and I'm the expert and I'm going to not that you won't get get it done. You just won't have a system that you really have that buy in from people. You know, you're, you, you will always have people who comply because they're scared. That doesn't mean that they're buying in. They might be doing it exactly when you're there, but that doesn't mean they're really following it when you're not there. So the key is that we, we want it to be a system that um, is followed because it's a good system, not followed because I scared somebody into. You're going to do, do this and that's it. So I am off my soapbox. Episode number 76, Leadership and Worker Participation. I'd like to thank you for joining me today. My name is Dr. David Ayers. Thank you and have a safe day.